there is a new report out by the Justice Department who has shown that most criminals got their guns illegally. And to this, basically everybody said, well, duh. I mean, for anybody that has any walking around sense or anybody that has actually studied this issue, the idea that most criminals are getting their guns illegally, I mean, that kind of makes sense. This idea that criminals are going to a retailer and purchasing their gun, going through a background check, all that stuff. Yeah, not any rational people really believe that. I mean, it happens, but it's rare. And we've seen this time and time again with big stories about mass shootings. We've seen it with stories of individual gun crime, that when these events happen, even though occasionally they have purchased their firearm illegally, most of the time, what happens is their firearm is either stolen or bought through a black market. And so it's just very rare to see somebody that actually went through the legal process and purchased their firearm in a legal way. It's very rare to see them actually wind up committing a crime with it. And so the DOJ report goes through this. It showed that only 7% out of the 300,000 state and federal prisoners that possessed a firearm during their crimes purchased them from a licensed dealer. So somebody with a federal firearms license, somebody that actually is a retailer because to sell any gun, to sell any gun through a retail business, you have to have a federal firearms license. And so because of that, we're looking at this and only 7% of all of those 300,000 people actually purchase their firearm that way. That's pretty small. And remember that that's just people that possessed a firearm at the time of their crime. That does not mean that they used it. So what we're looking at is if you, for example, got caught for embezzling and wound up in a federal prison, but you happen to own a firearm, they surveyed you too. Which means that the 7% of people that got their guns legally, that means that probably what's happening is there are quite a few in that number that didn't actually use their firearms in the crime. They were just busted for a federal crime and asked, okay, do you own a firearm? Do you own a weapon? Did you own it at the time of your crime? And if so, how did you get that firearm? So there's a lot of probably what we would refer to as nonviolent criminals that would fall into that 7% category. I don't know what that number would be exactly, but we're going to dive into the statistics and try to sort that out here. So remember, that is possessing, not using. So of that number, only 13% of those surveyed used a gun in their crime, and only 1.3% obtained it via retail. So 13% saying that they, uh, that they actually used their gun in a crime, only 13% of that 300,000 actually used a gun. And then out of that, only 1.3% obtained it via retail. So in other words, the ones that actually used a gun in the crime that they were committing, only 1.3% actually used their firearm that, that got it through a retail venue. In other words, that purchased their guns in a legal way. Only thir or sorry, only 0.8% got their gun at a gun show. Which, by the way, means that that's about 40% less than traditional retail. And so you'll hear this all the time. They'll say, we got to close the gun sh show loophole. we got to close the gun show loophole. Well, what they mean by that is they're saying what we really need to do is all transactions have to be regulated. So if, God forbid, my grandfather were to die and leave me one of his guns, I would be in violation of the law by just being in possession of that gun without going through some kind of registry or figuring out a way to get my gun on the radar for the federal government. You can't transfer a gun without some kind of bill of receipt, a cell, some way to know where all the guns are. So effectively, there is no way to enforce that law unless you have a national gun registry. So when they say universal background checks and closing the gun show loophole, that's what they're actually talking about. All private transactions must be done through the federal government. There has to be a registry of some kind to be able to enforce that. 
because I would have to do a background check to receive a gun even from my own grandfather or any other relative for that matter, anybody, no matter who it was. I would have to go through a background check to be able to obtain it, which is utterly ridiculous on a number of levels. But you always hear that buzzword. We got to close that gun show loophole. There is no gun show loophole. The same laws apply at gun shows as they do everywhere else. It's true that there are some people that happen to be sellers of guns that are not retail. And so they don't have a booth. They don't have a business or anything. They just happen to be, a, uh, they just happen to be walking around there and they might meet this guy's like, Hey, you know, that's a nice gun. By the way, I have a, a Remington 870 at the, at the house. Really? I'd really like to have a Remington 870. You want to sell it to me? See, in, in the mind of the federal government, the people that are wanting to regulate guns, that should be regulated. You should have to do a background check to do that. There are some people that meet up and do that, but that's very, very rare. And we're looking at it right here, that as far as criminals that used a gun in their crime, 0.8%, not even a whole percentage, got their guns at a gun show. And so it's absolutely ridiculous to believe that quote unquote closing the gun show loophole even if we actually did it and it would be a really bad idea if we did would have this big effect on crime and, and violent crime and gun crime now i always believe in taking the most extreme example sort of a uh, ad absurdum to try to test out a idea so what if we just implemented not just the gun control that liberals are talking about, let's say we went to the far extreme and said, look, we got to get this gun thing under control. So you know what? We're going to repeal the Second Amendment altogether. You do not have a right to own a gun. That means that based on these statistics, even if you got rid of guns completely, said it's no longer legal to even own a gun, that if they got rid of that, that means that 93% of criminals, according to these stats, even if there was no right to own a gun whatsoever in the Second Amendment, 93% of criminals would still obtain their guns. 93% of the criminals surveyed in here would have still got their guns because they didn't purchase it through legal channels anyway. 98.7% of crimes total would be completely unaffected. Because we're looking at the stat there that um, only 1.3% of those that used a gun in their crime obtained it via retail, so that's 98.7% of crimes that were committed with guns would be completely ineffected. 87% of crimes committed with guns would be completely ineffected. So you're talking about crimes that there was actually a gun used in the process of committing that crime. 87% of those crimes, no effect whatsoever. And here's the really staggering when we're talking about the gun show loophole. 99.2% of criminals that got their guns at gun shows, completely unaffected. If you closed the gun show loophole and you regulated that somehow, if you just stopped it in gun shows, 99.2% of criminals that commit crimes with guns wouldn't be affected by that rule at all. Not one bit. But somehow these policies are supposed to save us from the evils of gun violence. No. Even implementing the most radical of all gun control laws would have virtually no effect on crime overall. And these stats bear that out. And I want to point this out as well. Every single one of the stats that I gave you, as ridiculous as that would be, every single one of those operates on the assumption that criminals would not try to obtain their guns in any other way. So, for example, when I say that 99.2% of criminals would be completely unaffected if you tried to close the gun show loophole, that's assuming that that 0.8% .8 that did get their guns at a gun show would not try to obtain a gun anywhere else. So they would essentially go to a gun show and go, oh darn, looks like I can't buy a gun. Well, not going to commit any crimes. Not going to try to get a gun any other way. So each of these stats is assuming that that particular person, that particular criminal is not going to try to get a gun in any other way or try to, to try to obtain one in another way. Because you would think that if they could obtain a gun legally, if that all of a sudden was taken away from them, 
that they would just ignore the fact that they could buy them illegally. But that wouldn't happen in the real world because, of course, what's going to happen is if they can't obtain it legally, they're going to figure out a way to get it illegally. And so you really solve none of these problems. But this is why study after study after study on gun control shows, whether you're looking at the UK, whether you're looking at Australia, whether you're looking at Canada, it doesn't have an effect on gun violence or gun homicides. Because all you do when you pass these gun control laws is that you outlaw it for the legal citizen. The person that still wants to obtain their guns legally, they're going to. That's just how this works. Because criminals, as a general rule, don't follow the law. That's what makes them criminals. And so this study shows that just about all the criminals that are committing crimes with guns don't actually get them through legal channels and the ones that do, even if you put that laws, those laws into place, that would assume that they aren't going to try to get them illegally. That basically, once they meet that first barrier, oh well, can't get them legally, guess I won't buy any guns or try to commit any crimes. And so the people that think that gun control would actually work, those people are living in a fantasy world. Not one that's based on facts, not one that's based on statistics, one that is based on their own whims and emotions. This is normally the part of the video where I tell you to go ahead and like and subscribe, but the truth is, I really don't care whether you do or not. I mean, it's not like you really need all the latest news and commentary from me. It's not like there's a lot of really important stuff going on in the world and in the state of Alabama right now that you should probably be aware of. So, you know what? Like and subscribe, or don't. I don't really care. Reverse psychology. Boom.